Hello, it's been a week, I know. Things have come up and all that stuff. And yeah, but first let's talk about Rushmore. Number 65, Rushmore. Looking like this because apparently Asusa Pacific doesn't sell, send um, DVD cases, so all I have to show for is this is the DVD. You can kind of see the word collection right there. But anyway, Wes Anderson. The first, but not certainly not the last Wes Anderson film we're going to see. And damn it all, if they're all like this. And oh good. Anyway, it's not very long, only 90 minutes. It's not bad. You know. And uh, yeah, I had to look, I had to preview everything, you know, before last Wednesday because I thought, okay, or after, actually, I did it after. Um, after I did what, whatever 64 was, what, what was 64? Oh, The Third Man, after I did it after The Third Man. Um, and yeah, it's weird how you can go from something as awesome as The Third Man as something as uh, about Rush Hour. But let's, I mean, Rush, not Rush Hour, Rush Hour is amazing. And it'll never be in the Criteria Collection. I'm talking about Rushmore, Wes Anderson, uh, Jason Schwartzman, Bill Murray, uh, some other people. And yeah, so let's talk about this. So there's the plot. plot. The basic plot. It's about this 15-year-old, quote-unquote, genius named Max Fisher who goes to a prep school, Rushmore Prep School, and he he started a billion, kajillion academic classes, I mean, um, extracurricular activity, you know, clubs and things like that, at the same time pretty much bombing all his classes. And so the headmaster, like, puts him on probation. Um, and threatens to, you know, expel him and all that. Um, meanwhile, he's become friends with this big oil tycoon and also pining for this new teacher who, um, who is like, of course, a lot older than him. At the same time, um, his oil tycoon, his oil friend, um, Bloom, I think his name is Bloom, um, he ends up falling for her as well. And so there's this, love triangle going on and of course Rosemary the teacher falls for Bloom ends up falling for Bloom even though he's married and he ends up having a divorce her because Max you know in a fit of rage after being you know outraged that uh, that um, he, when he finds out that Bloom's fallen in love with uh, Rosemary and they've started dating uh, they end up going to this whole like revenge thing which culminates in Bloom arresting Max for uh, you know for breaking up his marriage and no actually for cutting the brakes on his car I think that's the yeah that's the first thing they do or that's the the final straw and then Max gets arrested and he ends up working at his dad's barber shop and yeah it's really confusing of course then you know it's just it's all good of course it's all got a happy ending he ends up you know. Um, getting he ends in the end he ends up realizing that uh, Rosemary and Bloom were meant to be together right in the end and he ends up trying to get them back together by putting on this play about which is a parody of Apocalypse Now and yeah that's all that's all I'm gonna say about this film I really just I'd heard a number of things about Wes Anderson from friends and otherwise. And now that I've seen his stuff, I'm just like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about this one. Um, first of all, I'm not sure why we're supposed to think that Max is a likable character. I There was nothing, I mean, in the beginning, when you start it off, you know, he's got the dream sequence where he thinks that he figures out the smartest math problem and I was like, okay, that's 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 hilarious. That's a genius, you know, perfect. You know, but then he just he he's a smart ass, you know, and it's just that's really annoying. That's that's not funny, that's just freaking annoying after a while. Um and yeah, there's um it's really hard to just get past how annoying Max is. Um but yeah there's the um apart from that it's just it's just yeah, like I said, it's it's really hard to get away how Max is and how persistent he is with Rosemary. I think that's the the stupidest thing, um, and just how 
how much of a dick he is toward Bloom when he, you know, he finds out that he's, you know, he's, you know, dating Rosemary. And, you know, spraying the whole rumor about um, his um, chapel partner, uh, Dirk, spraying the rumor about giving his mom a blowjob. I mean, a hand job, not a blowjob. Um, yeah, it's just, where is this going? What, what's supposed to be so funny about this? This is horrible. This is tragic. You know, and so, I mean, yeah, I could see the humor in it, but I couldn't laugh at it. I didn't think it was funny. And maybe that's, you know, that doesn't make me such a great reviewer, but, you know, at least, at least I have an opinion. At least I can say something about it, you know. At least I can say why, you know. It's because I didn't think Max Fisher was a very likable person. You know, I've seen Jason Schwartzman on things like Bored, Bored to Death, you know, which is hilarious. Um, but, you know, and, you know, a couple bit parts he's done on TV shows. But, you know, this is first, and maybe this is just his first film, you know. And, of course, Wes Anderson, and maybe it's just, maybe it's just the combination of Wes Anderson and Jason Schwartzman. And friggin' Owen Wilson. Why Owen Wilson is involved in this, I don't know, because Owen Wilson has a broken nose. I said it. Anyway, so, yeah, um, this movie isn't, so, yeah, just to summarize, let's just end this real one here. Summarize, this movie isn't Picnic Hanging Rock bad, this isn't Night Porter bad, this isn't Unbearable Lightness of Being bad, and this certainly as hell isn't Sallow bad. In fact, it's not a bad movie. It really isn't. It had some genuinely funny moments and some genuinely, you know, really nice moments in it. It's just annoying. And I think that's what Wes Anderson's movies are going to be for me. Annoying. Royal Tannenbaums, um, Darjeeling Limited, um, Life Aquatic with Steve Suzu, uh, Bottle Rocket, you know, uh, there's another one. There's, a, there's like five in the, there's five other of his movies in the Criterion Collection right now. Grand Budapest Hotel will probably probably be right into the Criterion Collection as soon as it's out of theaters, which I, I think it might be already, but anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to give this a C-. minus. I can't give it a D because it is a, a movie. It is a movie with a plot that makes sense and an ending. But it, it just fails overall. Oh, one more thing I need to mention. The music. The music's stupid. The music, I think, really brings down the aesthetic of the film. And brings it into this really hipster aesthetic. Every song features an acoustic guitar. Every song is hip. The song is hipster. They're very folk-driven. And looking at all the soundtracks to his films, they're all like that, you know, it seems like. I mean, apart from, you know, I mean, I don't know about Mark, Mark Mothersburg's scores for these other films, but I'm assuming it's probably the same thing. So, yeah, that, that really ruined it for me. The, a really bland soundtrack. I mean, even the Who's, he picked a quick one while he's away, you know, which is just like, it's not a song that you could play one section of it, especially in a scene where it doesn't make any sense. You know, so, yeah. Of course, the last scene where they all, they're all dancing, they're playing like an old slow jazz record, and he puts on that one song by that one guy with the guitar, and I was like, oh my god, they're not gonna dance to hip hop, no, they're gonna put on ding, 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 and I'm like, oh my god, just stop, just stop, 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 stop. So yeah, that brought it down, and so for this, C minus. I wanna give it a D plus so badly, but I'm not going to. Just, just because I'm trying to be nice. So C minus. Um, it's, it's, yeah, you can do better. We're coming off the third man. The third man was amazing, you know? What happened? What was their thought process? What were they thinking? I sound like angry video game nerd now. But anyway, so, Rush Hour, yeah, C-. minus. All right, supplements. Uh, let's see what supplements. There's a making of documentary directed by uh, Wes's brother, Eric. Uh, there's, um, storyboards, um, the trailer. The uh, episode of Charlie Rose featuring Bill Murray and Wes Anderson talking about Rushmore. And uh, auditions, uh, the MTV M movie uh, movie awards from 1999, the shorts they did, which are kind of funny. They do like Max, 
the Max Fisher players put on their own, you know, interpretations of different films that were on like Armageddon and Out of Sight and um, what was the other one? I forget the other one. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so there's that, and then yeah, that's that's basically it. There's just a lot of archival photos, so yeah. But I'm done talking about Rushmore. 65 done. Finally, go C minus. All right, so the reason why, yeah, so basically the reason why I've kept this off for so long because the main reason why, you know, is because I just, you know, uh, I meant to do this, you know, like earlier last week. I said I'd do it, you know, Thursday, Friday, but I haven't gotten, you know, but stuff, personal stuff has come up and I just kind of put it off. And when I found out that I wasn't getting the blood of a poet on Saturday, number 67, I kind of said, you know, well, I'm just going to put this off because for for me personally in the inside I kind of thought like I even didn't think I was going to like this movie very much anyway you know was I proved right you know so so I said you know I'll just do it when I have to do it and so I just put it off till today so yeah and because this was the only movie I'd have to do it's not like I have time to do you know Blood of a Poet Orpheus Orpheus and the and Testament of Orpheus which are floating around here somewhere oh well, there's Orpheus. I got the, the special edition of Orpheus, number 68. Um, but yeah, they're at the library. So 69, Last, Tem Last Temptation of Christ, number 60. Number 70 is there. Um, Magic Flute is, is there, number 71. But yeah, Blood of a Poet didn't come until today. So yeah, so I thought, you know what? The only movie I'm going to do this weekend is Rushmore. I'll just put it, we'll just wait until, you know. So yeah, if you were waiting for me to, for this one, I apologize. You know, I'm just I only like doing them more if I've got more to do, and I've got a lot to do now. You know, I've got Blood of a Poet, Orpheus this weekend, Blood of a Poet, Orpheus, Testament of Orpheus, Last Temptation of Christ, Magic Flute, and probably um, number seventy-two, Lamillion, which I put a hold on, um, which will be coming, and then probably this probably because if it comes in, I'll put on a hold on. I think on number seventy-three, which I think is. David Lean's Brief Encounter. I'm not sure. I think that's somewhere in the 70s or maybe the 80s. And that, yeah, I know that one's coming up because uh, I'd heard about it when you know, I saw Oliver Twist and Great Expectations. I wondered what else he directed. So, yes, there you are. There is the Criterion Collection, number 65. We are making progress, finally. Oh, yeah, by the way, um, in case you were wondering what happened to 66, 66 is the Orphic Trilogy. Apparently, I guess... 67, 68, 69, the Jean Cocteau films were all sold together, I'm assuming. I haven't seen it, but um, the package. But yeah, so, yeah, I'm, yeah, so there probably, yeah, so there isn't going to be a, a 66 video. In fact, we'll probably just label this 66. I'll put 60, number 65 and 66 and just say Orphic Trilogy. I'll say Orphic Trilogy a number of times right now. Orphic Trilogy. The Orphic Trilogy. The Orphic Trilogy. And in fact, let's speculate what the Orphic Trilogy is about. Well, I've read the story of Orpheus. In fact, I did my um, my senior music history project on um, Orfeo, the, um, the story of or the, the opera, the old Greek opera. Um, I did it to the tune of uh, – I wrote uh, – re rearranged the words of Rebecca Black's Friday – to tell the story of Orpheus, and if I could remember them or you know pull it up, I would totally sing it you know, right now. But thank God I don't remember who the words. This is kind of embarrassing. But anyway, so yeah, so let's just call that the Orphic trilogy, or maybe maybe um, I mean if I can pull it off, I might try doing sixty six. You know, the entire Orphic trilogy in one sitting, in one video, like maybe Sunday. Depends on how long the videos are. I mean, the movies are all like within not too long, within like 80, 80 to 100 minutes, I think, maybe as much as two hours for the last one. I think the further you get on, the more they get, um, the longer they get. So, yeah, we'll try, we might try that this weekend. Um, I know I'm, yeah, probably I will not. More than likely, we'll be able to do it till this weekend, Saturday or Sunday, probably Sunday, because I will try for the whole doing them all in one day thing, but we'll see. 
If not, then, you know, you'll see me maybe do them, maybe one do on Thursday, do one on Friday, Saturday. So, in fact, we might do that anyway, so that, you know, for Thursday, Blood of a Poet, Friday, in fact, that I think we might we'll try that. Thursday, Blood of a Poet, tend to schedule, Thursday, Blood of a Poet, Friday, Orpheus, um, Saturday, uh, uh, Testament of Orpheus, Sunday, Last Temptation of Christ, because that one's friggin' long. Um, so, uh, Monday, uh, Magic Flute, and maybe Tuesday, if it comes, the million, and then we'll be all caught up. So, tentative schedule, we'll try it, um, and yeah, so that's it. Alright, we're, we're, we're done. We're, I'm done blathering around around here, so I'll let you get back to your lives. And yes, so we will see you maybe tomorrow, maybe, I mean, maybe Thursday for Blood of a Poet, otherwise, maybe this weekend. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't be Max Fisher. Go to class, learn something, stay in school, and don't st start a billion classes, because, yeah, what a dickhead. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. And until then, we'll see you later for uh, Blood of a Poet. Until then, goodbye.